Hi, my name's Phil, I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the central reason why there is absolutely no chance whatsoever that Boris Johnson's government can possibly deliver on their plans for post-Brexit Britain. And the reason is simple enough. They don't have a plan. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So the Conservatives have their precious Brexit or at least we've left the EU, which means that we have some sort of Brexit in the back. It may not be the one that they quite wanted, in fact, quite clear that it is not, but they will spend the next few years fighting to shape it into the one that they want. But this is an internal party battle, albeit one that affects us all, but it's not a Brexit benefit to be sold to the electorate come 2024. The government wants and arguably need to show us the fruits of Brexit even if they are falsely attributed, which they inevitably will be. The government will argue that everything that goes right in the next few years is because we left the EU, thus making the downsides worthwhile. And we've already seen this with the vaccine. On the face of it, our rollout of the vaccine has gone, you know, much more according to plan than a lot of the EU. The government seized on this and claimed that our vaccine rollout is successful because of Brexit. But we implemented the policy while still following EU rules. So this is nonsense. We could have chosen to do exactly what we chose to do as full EU members. But that doesn't matter. People don't think these things through. Like I say, absolutely anything that can be sold as a win to the public will be sold as a direct benefit of Brexit, whether it is or it is not. And I hardly think it ever actually will be. On the flip side, they will sell every disaster as the fault of Labour or the EU. We've also seen this in action already. The problems we're having with trade, either between Britain and the EU or Britain and Northern Ireland, they're not down to the fact that we've not prepared ourselves for the change. It's not because we left the EU. It's because the EU are, have sour grapes and are being awkward about it. This also makes no sense. Take trade between Britain and Northern Ireland, for example. The customs border in the Irish Sea is managed on both sides by the UK. That's because that border is inside the UK. The EU have no control over it. Their role is purely in monitoring. I don't think they're very happy with the monitoring at the moment, but that's all they can do. They don't apply the checks in either direction. We do. So any chaos in this process is 100% down to us. But that doesn't matter. Again, people don't think these things through. And this will be the pattern for years to come, until Brexit becomes too toxic for even the Conservatives, many years in the future. However, blaming Labour, the EU, maybe some minority groups in the UK is one thing, but will the Conservatives at least have enough good things to show for Brexit to sell themselves in the next election? Put simply, no. Now, I could say this, it's because of their basic lack of competence to deliver on any plans. But my certainty is even simpler than that. They don't actually have any plans. They have vague policy aims, but no actual plan. This year, for example, I've been teaching part-time, amongst other things, project management for a group of engineers. Now, an engineering project can take years, sometimes decades, but it can certainly take years. And it has to be planned in meticulous detail before you begin. You need to identify your aims, your success and failure criteria. What are the potential problems that could hit your project during its implementation and how will you cope with them? And so on. What is Boris Johnson's levelling up scheme for a large project? And like any large project, it needs a detailed plan. Where is it? It doesn't exist. I don't mean I don't think the plan is a good one or it seems a bit light. I'm not saying that they haven't adequately considered the obstacles to success and so it will be derailed because they've been too optimistic. I mean, there literally, objectively, is not a plan at all. A recent article in the Financial Times was pointing out the industrial strategy that the Conservatives under Theresa May published in 2017. That's been dropped. Not changed, not replaced with a different one, just dropped. Right now, industries in the UK are suffering badly from Brexit. The government constantly talks about the need to adapt to a post-Brexit future. However, who is coordinating this adaptation? Nobody, because that's the job of government. We have a government department for industrial strategy, but we no longer have an industrial strategy. 
That means there is now officially no plan for developing our post-Brexit industries. Without a plan, there can be no coordinated efforts. That means we will not grow those industries or any others. Boris Johnson may still believe that he only needs to announce a vague policy and that it will somehow happen. But those of us who have not enjoyed immunity from failures in life know that nothing happens unless you drive it. You have to push it. The same applies to this massive building programme aimed at Conservative targets for the next election, especially in the north of England. Oh, there'll be lots of money thrown around, to be sure, no problem. But there is no plan at all for actually levelling up the country. The only references to the levelling up policy are overviews and comments about the funding. But where's the white paper? A white paper is a government plan, put simply, for something they wish to implement, including the necessary legislation required. The only relevant white papers that Boris Johnson has produced for his post-Brexit vision are one on the UK internal market, which is a misnomer for a start because there's no such thing, and a net zero energy white paper. The two together don't even exceed by that much the total number of pages that Theresa May's industrial strategy paper had. And that wasn't considered to be all that good. But that's it. There's no white paper on levelling up, no white paper on industrial strategy. So Boris Johnson is promising lots of benefits, but just as with his COVID pandemic response, he has no plan for getting us from where we are now to those sunlit uplands where the unicorns prance all day long. So this isn't even a case of not believing that the Conservatives would make good on their promises because of competence. A genuinely competent government could not possibly deliver such schemes without a detailed project plan. And even if a plan somehow popped up in the next year or two, it couldn't possibly be put into effect in time for the election. And despite outward appearances, the Conservatives are not actually thick enough to believe that they can deliver on this stuff without that plan. Because they do have plans for the things they genuinely want to do, we may not be privy to their details. Which means that they must know that come the next general election in 2024, they will not have delivered what they said they would. They know that right now. That means that they will have to rewrite history again and somehow claim that they did deliver what they promised. Even, or they'll try and say, well, we actually promised you a dung heap. But, add, oh, you want great things. You want us to, to promise brilliant. Okay, we'll promise brilliant things for 2029. No problem. If only we'll vote for them again. Because that's their only real plan. Continue to gaslight us all while stripping our national assets bare. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.